I guess I'm just going to stand here and wait for people to pop in then. Did you post up on the... I did. Okay. Do you want to check the Facebook group as well? I don't know if there's anybody here. I did. Someone... Does it say who it is? It's got a Twitch name, so I don't know. Oh, fancy. Is. Okay, so we're on Twitch for the first time. So if you guys chat in, chat in who it is so that I know how to say hi. It's Kyle. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. First in. Welcome to my fancy kitchen. Okay, well, all right. So I guess it's just you and me for now. All right, so we are making honey roasted duck because 31 people decided that they wanted me to be really bougie and make duck. So. Printed out my recipe. There's no picture on this one. But we have duck breasts here. One for the raw meat, one for the cooked meat after it's done. I set them out to rest for about 10 minutes or so after coming out of the fridge to let them come up to room temp. We've got fresh green beans. And the recipe calls for roasted hazelnuts. I got raw hazelnuts and roasted them myself when I tested it last weekend, so I had some left over, so I'm just gonna use these. But if you dry roast them in the oven for like 15, 20 minutes, it'll be nice and crispy. Kyle says he approves of your sanitation practices. Thank you very much. This is always, if ever, a food safe kitchen. I'm not gonna fuck this up, I hope. All right, so other than that, um, we've got Lots of other little ingredients in here, spices and whatnot. We've got Chinese five spice, honey, soy sauce, and the salad for, or the, the salad, which is really just green beans and hazelnuts and a dressing. I accidentally made twice as much dressing when I tested it, so I still have some left over. But basically what this is, is hazelnut oil, cherry vinegar, a little bit of lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Um, and I posted the recipe back on the Facebook group if you guys want to cook along. Just know that I already did this and I don't normally do the pre-made steps because, you know, I feel like Pole Chef is designed to bring the actual reality of how long it takes to cook things to the kitchen because this is not a five minute tasty video, this is real life. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take out the duck. We are going to score the skin. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have worked with duck before, but duck breasts are extraordinarily lean meat, so they will go dry very easily. So when you cook duck, it's important that you make the skin really crispy. So in order to do that, we cook it fat side down for like most of the time, and then flip it over and baste it and make it all delicious. So because of the way that the skin fits around the meat. Kind of like fish uh, fillets with the skin on, you want to score it so that when it's skin side down, when the fat tightens, it doesn't buckle and it stays flat. So I'm going to move my beer out of the way. And my mod has run off somewhere. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do like crisscross like this and then like this. Um, I recently just sharpened my knife, so we'll see how well this goes. So I'm just doing like 
light lines, maybe like half a centimeter or so. Do not go all the way down to the bottom of the meat. You really just want like a nice edge in there. I'm doing about like an inch apart or so because this is a pretty big duck breast, so I don't want to have too many little lines. The lines also help catch the like juices and whatever other like flavorings and stuff you want to put in the pan when you're basting it. It'll all like absorb into the skin. Shit, it's delicious. And I apologize. Larry, my mod has run off, so if you guys are chatting me, I cannot see you, but if there's more of you here, welcome and hi. Thank you for checking sound levels. How are the sound levels? You sound fantastic. Fantastic. And the video is good. Wonderful. Anybody say anything? Yeah, Kyle says you should raise the duck and slaughter it yourself. I should, you know, now that we have like a yard and shit. I'm sure Oliver would have a grand old time with that. Well, speaking of Oliver. Internet! Dog in the kitchen! <laughs> Oliver, Oliver is our resident pup and also vulture. All right, so what we're gonna do with the duck is we're going to season it with salt, pepper, and the Chinese five spice as well. So I'm going to do that in the in the plate because it makes it easier and it helps keep the uh, spices where they're supposed to be. So. And we're going to do both sides. to flip it over and rub it around to get all the spices all ground into the skin. Press it in. Get all the nooks and crannies. Okay, and I'm actually going to put the breast directly into this nonstick pan I have over here on the stove because you want to start this off in a cold pan and bring it up to about like medium, medium low or so, so that the fat starts to melt and render down but not burn. So I'm just going to stick this over in the pan real quick while I work on the second one. These are big ass duck breasts, so these are gonna be really, really large. So, someone has asked, they've never had duck. What? Ah. Describe it in relation to other meats. What is it, uh, how's it different? Hmm, okay, so duck is. It sounds a lot more gamey than it actually is. It actually has a pretty mild flavor. Um, it's not gonna be like venison or elk or any like odd flavors. Um, it's very similar to turkey in that it's a very lean meat, but I don't know, it's got, it's really difficult to describe. Duck is kind of its own little category. It is, it's not as intimidating as it sounds. It's not as gamey or weird tasting as it sounds. It's definitely worth trying sometime. I recommend going to a mid to high level restaurant. Don't like get duck just anywhere because duck can also be cooked wrong easily. Um, so, but don't be afraid of it. I had, the first time I ever had duck was actually, 
I think it was like a Blue Apron recipe or something, one of those like subscription boxes that we do back when. And I was surprised because I didn't think that, you know, duck was really accessible to your average person. But we made it and it turned out really good, actually. So I'm going to wash my hands. I got all these spices and shit all over everything. And then I'm going to stick this in the pan and I'm going to move you guys to my stove cam. And one of these days we will have multiple cameras, but it is not this day. Talk to the hand. All right. This is, this is so fun. Uh, so it sounds like you cook it like a super medium poultry? Yes, that is precisely so. All right. Giving you guys the tilt down. Can you see me okay? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn on some light. Okay. So now I'm going to bring over the duck breast. Other breast. I'm gonna stick it right next to this guy. And these look like they're filling up a lot of the pan. They will reduce in size as they cook, so I'm just gonna leave it. So now I'm gonna turn my stove up to medium. Always start with a cold pan. You do not need oil. Promise. The duck has all the fat you're gonna need. While that sits, I'll tilt you guys up so you can see my face. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna render this down. Okay, yeah. We're gonna render this down and as the fat renders, it's gonna melt into the pan and I'm gonna have to pour it out. So what I've done is I have one of these like little grill pot things for like melting butter and stuff for a grill. And I have a tiny little mesh sieve and I set it on top to catch like any debris or spices or little bits and particles. And from the test run this past weekend, we have a tiny little jar of duck fat. This is the Chinese five spice flavored one from the duck. And then I have duck fat from way back when. That's just regular old duck fat. This stuff is good for literally every fucking thing. So you could cook potatoes in this, you could cook other meats in it, vegetables, like anything that you would normally use, like oil or butter or anything for, this is going to go good with that. Actually, I've got a lot of duck fat, so if anybody's watching here that works with me, you guys might be getting a present uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Just a heads up. Someone says that duck fat fried potatoes are amazing, and that does sound pretty good. Oh, yes. We have a, uh, well, a an old and uh, up-and-coming tradition at the same time um, of making brunch on Sundays, mostly because we usually do something crazy and drink a lot on Saturdays and we need hangover food. Um, so we'll do, like, potatoes and eggs and sometimes rice because I've been on a rice-for-breakfast kind of kick and veggies and shit like that. So it would definitely be really cool to add some duck fat to those potatoes. It would be fucking delicious. So, while that's getting warmed up, okay, and I can start to feel the pan is starting to warm up a little bit. I'm gonna... The untapped asks, are you going to baste it with the duck fat as it cooks? You know, I should. The, the recipe itself, what I did was I found, because I didn't think about that at the time, I used a pad of cold butter, so I added butter to the recipe in anticipation of doing that. But that's a way better idea, so we're going to do that instead. We're going to deviate from the recipe! <laughs> Which is something I tell people not to do if they've made something the first time, but I've already made this, so I'm going to break my own rule. Um, while we're waiting, I'm going to clean off my board and then I'm going to start doing the super interesting task of pulling all the little stems off these fucking beans. Um, I've already washed them. They've been sitting in a paper towel to dry. So now we're just pulling off the stems while we wait for that to melt. Um, where are the towels? So if you don't have the room for or money to get a second cutting board, what I use to, this doesn't fully sterilize it, but I have a one-to-one -one ratio of white vinegar and water. 
um, and I just spray down my cooking station. If you want to use like a soap and water and sponge and stuff, but the vinegar and water mixture I found still makes it okay for food to touch the board again. If you wash it with like Dawn soap or like a Lysol wipe or some shit and you have a lot of chemicals in the cleaner. So I think that it's a lot less intrusive, but still gets it clean enough that I'm not worried about like cross contamination or anything like that. If I'm wrong, someone please tell me so that I cannot do that because I do strive to have a food safe kitchen and I would hate to put anybody in danger because I'm ignorant. Especially me. Especially my husband. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do this really interesting thing and peel these things off the beans. So these are, I think the, the term is French style green beans. I don't actually know what other kind of bean can, is considered a green bean that's not these. I know they're like sugar snap peas. I know that there's, <laughs> give you guys a tilt so you can see my very interesting work. <laughs> Cool, we'll get these angles. Eventually we'll have like another monitor. Okay, you can't even see me. That's right. fine. That's, <laughs> we don't need to see you, we just need to see the food. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I don't really know exactly what other kind of beans are classified as a green bean. If anybody knows and has access to Google, please feel free to educate me. But this is French style green beans. These are really good any number of ways. They're good raw, they're good sauteed, Blanched, which is what we're going to do today. We're just going to cook them in hot water for like a couple minutes, stick them in ice cold water so that they're cooked a little but still crispy. Because if there's one thing I hate, it's mushy vegetables, unless it's supposed to be that way. I was in the shot. Oh, I mean, <laughs> you can take the laptop somewhere else. See your angles. Okay. It's a learning channel. <laughs> this is a learning channel. One of these days we'll get a monitor hookup and I can see myself. And maybe even multiple cameras so I don't have to drag my cell phone around my kitchen. And normally at this point, since there are people in the chat I would normally be listening to music or watching TV in the background, but I tried to do that when I was streaming on Facebook Live one time, and that was a bad idea, because they did not like me playing copyrighted music in the background, so they cut my stream off halfway through. But I have seen some streamers, this is our first like official stream ever. So, you know, if you guys have tips and tricks, if any of you guys have streamed before, um, this isn't exactly something that requires you listening to really anything but me talking um, and me answering your questions. But if you guys have tips about like smart ways to play things in the background or during like lulls or stuff that you guys like to do to keep yourself entertained, that's perfect too. Snap right now. And I really like this uh, mobile prep cart thing. This is actually a bar cart that we got that has like shelves and stuff to hold like glasses and bottles of alcohol on the bottom that I have commandeered. And um, our roommate, Steve, attached one of the uh, tiny trash cans to the side of it so I can use it for like food scraps and stuff and it's probably the best thing ever and I've got like all my measuring cups and tongs and stuff and I've got knives and bowls stored under here so I can literally just wheel this around my kitchen and I don't have to worry about not having stuff that's a good question what are you guys what is your favorite 
thing in your kitchen, either for functionality, for convenience, for efficiency, like it can be a gadget, it can be uh, an appliance or, you know, a tool of some kind. Like what do you guys use to save time or make your job easier in the kitchen? That's what I want to know. But I am all about that efficient life. Crashman55 says his favorite is a rice cooker. Ooh, you know, I used to have a rice cooker and then I was dumb and got rid of it because I was like, oh, I'll just make rice in the stove because I want to teach myself how to cook rice and not be lazy. But then I realized that there are three people in my house now and that's a lot of rice and it'd be way easier to just put it in there. Plus, I can use it for other things. Um, I actually saw recently there was a video I've watched on YouTube where this guy makes black garlic and ferments it in the rice cooker. It takes like forever and you have to like put it outside somewhere where it won't get wet because you have to run it for like a while. But I am really thinking about giving that a try because I love black garlic and it's kind of annoying to try and find unless you want to buy it like really expensively at like Whole Foods or some shit. So I'm gonna back up. Yeah, half the face is not showing. Um, no! I'm so far away from the stove. Okay. We're gonna make a camera readjustment. One second. While you're doing that, the untap says a good sharp knife. Their favorite. <laughs> that is perfection. Can you flip that around so I can check my stuff? Thanks. I'm gonna switch this around a little bit. Ooh, I hear some sizzling. See, that's the other thing, too, is that I, uh, I'm going to get some of this stove action, actually, real quick. So, I hope you guys, yeah, you can see it a little bit. So, the duck is rendering down. I'm going to hold this up here so you guys can kind of see it. I don't know if you can hear it at all, but you can see that the duck fat is starting to, like, melt down and be all liquidy. So when that gets a little bit more melted down, I'm gonna tilt it into here and start draining it off. But it's not gonna sear real hot and fast like you know a steak or something would. So you're definitely gonna to want to be patient, have something to do, maybe have a cooking snack. How about a stream? Or stream. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Brilliant idea. Richard Henry says his favorite thing currently is his outside venting stove hood system. Ooh, because when things smoke, his house doesn't get super smoky. Yeah, there were definitely a couple places where we lived where the smoke alarm would go off pretty much constantly. Um, and I definitely love to have one of those. That sounds amazing. Okay, so we've got a little bit of bubble action happening on the duck, so I'm going to tilt you guys down a little bit. Is that okay? Perfect. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my towels so I can hold the duck against the pan. And I'm going to do this backwards once just for you guys, but I... <laughs> But I am right-handed, so I'm not going to do this a second time. I'm going to rotate these. Now I'm going to push this up against... Eh. Can you see that there? All right, cool. So I'm going to push the duck up against the pan so it doesn't fall out. And I'm just going to... There's a lot of fucking fat in there. And there's like little bits of salt and spices and stuff that fall in there too, which is why I have the sieve on there. So from now until the end of the stream, I'm going to do that the other way around because I'm right-handed and that was a little difficult. But you can see, even just being on there a couple of minutes, the fat's starting to render down. I don't want to burn it. So like if I pick this up real quick so you guys can kind of see the other side. So it's a little bit brown. Most of that is from the spice, the Chinese five spice, which makes it a little brown. But I'm going to leave that to sit, and then every couple of minutes or so, I'm just going to keep dumping fat until there's, like, no fat left. There's just a very thin, crispy line. The thin, crispy line. Uh, the untap says he 100% took the batteries out of the smoke detector so they could cook in peace. Yep, so did we. We shouldn't have, but we did. 
We put them back, we put them in a drawer, and then we put them back before we moved out, but we absolutely did that. And uh, Jack Monkey FX says hello. Hi, Justin. No. Jack oh, Monkey. that's Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Threw me off with a Jack. Hi, babe. I love it when I can recognize somebody. Yeah, if you guys if you guys know me and I know who you are and you're in the chats, go ahead and like chat in your name so that I can associate Twitch handles with who you are. Because this is the first time I've streamed on Twitch. This is the not the first time I've streamed. I used to do it on Facebook Live, so I had people's like actual names that I could call them by. So we we already have more fat to drain. This is this is basically like eighty five percent of this recipe, and I. I have to say to the 31 of y'all that voted to make me make duck, this is the last time <laughs> because not only is duck really expensive, but it takes forever to render this fat down properly. And I really, really don't want to spend two hours waiting for fat to melt. So from here out, what we'll be doing is we will be making the food subscription box meals that we get. Right now, we're using Dinnerly, um, and I have referral codes if you guys wanna give them a try. They specialize in fewer ingredients, simpler recipes, which for a house of three people is a lot easier than trying to juggle a lot of complicated recipes and a whole crap ton of minutia ingredients. So um, we've done Blue Apron, we've done Home Chef, which is what started the stream, um, we've done HelloFresh and a couple others, but right now we're doing dinnerly. So basically you guys are going to be able to watch us make simple meals or just whatever we're having for dinner that night. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll do like, you know, certain people. If you guys decide to subscribe and watch me a lot, then maybe we'll let people like vote on the special episode or something like that. Or if you guys have specific recipes that you know about or you want me to see you cook your grandfather's chili or some shit, then, you know, maybe we can work something out with that. But for now, for the sake of my wallet and your time, we'll stick with some simple shit. This is also the first house that I've lived in that has an induction cooktop. Um, prior to this, we've had electric, and um, I think we had maybe one or two places we lived that were a gas cooktop. I definitely prefer a gas cooktop because it gives you more control over the temperature. So if you need to boil something and then bring it down to a simmer or bring something low and then turn it hot, like you can do extremes a lot faster without having to wait for it to heat up and then wait for it to cool down. The cooling down part is usually harder because if you have like a sauce or soup or something liquid that you need to boil and then reduce down to like a simmer. If you have uh, even induction, induction cooktops that I find are a little bit better than electric. Electric is the fucking worst um, because it takes forever to cool down. The coils don't cool down fast. So you run the risk of burning stuff between the time that you get from here down to where you need to be. So. It's been an interesting experience cooking on this. Plus, I like that it's got a flat glass surface, so I can just wipe it clean. So we're going to give you guys some more duck shots. This is the money shots. What they really came to see. Right. You guys You guys came to see fat melt. That, that glistening, bubbly, liquidy goodness. Brigadette Marie says, gas stove or bus? Yes, gas stove or bus. Make that a stream hashtag. All right. I think that's that's about enough of that for now. Um, what are you guys up to tonight? Talk to me about your lives and stuff. If anybody's drinking with me, what are you drinking? What's your favorite thing to drink while you're cooking? What's your favorite thing to eat while you're cooking? Because everybody who has ever cooked ever has a cooking snack. Mine is usually cheese, um, but I have discovered, oh, actually. Yeah. So these little babies, blue cheese stuffed olives. Thank you, uh, Steve, because my friend Steve, 
um, introduced these to me in the form of a martini at one point. And I normally don't really consider myself to be a blue cheese fan. Eh, it's okay. It's not great. I usually go for ranch when it comes to wings instead of blue cheese. But um, I had this and I actually didn't really used to think that I liked olives either. But I guess you put two things that I'm kind of meh about together and it uh, turns out I really like them. So this is my preferred cooking snack and also like really good Irish cheddar, which I also might have in here. <laughs> I do. Harry Gold. I'm going to take the sticker off the fucking label. Look at him, he says. They're drinking a Licking Hole Creek Strawberry Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen? Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen. That sounds really fucking good. Fast okay. Band 55 is an Austin East Cider Pineapple Cider. Ooh, pineapple cider. I have never heard of pineapple cider, but I guess you could cider kind of any fruit. And that sounds fucking delicious. And also sounds like you should maybe mix it with rum. And just double up on that shit. So this is my preferred snacking cheese, Terry Gold. Um, I really like the Dubliner version, but the natural cheddar or the aged cheddar or reserved cheddar is really, really good. More fat to drain. Most of this stream is going to be me draining fat, so this is going to be a long, slow process, and then I promise it'll all pick up at the end. Um, unlike steak, I do not put the duck in the oven, though I have seen some recipes where people do at a low temperature for a short period of time just to cook the meat. Um, I'm just going to pan sear it the whole way because we're going to baste it with the honey soy sauce glaze, which I can't really do in the oven. So that's that. But this is rendering nicely. Try and be patient. I'm trying not to burn it too much because if you burn it, then it's not going to render down and then you'll have this big ass thick strip of fat that you have to chew through and it's just really gross and chewy. So yeah. What I want to know right now from everybody is what is your favorite protein to cook and why? Because I always like trying new proteins or cooking old favorites different ways. And I'm always really curious to see like how people like to cook their protein, if there's a reason behind that, if it's, you know, I got traumatized by eating some undercooked chicken one time, so now I hate chicken. Or, you know, I had a really, really good steak one time, so now I always make a steak that way. There's, there's always a method to the madness. So I want to know what kind of proteins make you guys happy. Hey husband. Guess what? Beer me. I'm working here. <laughs> what do you want? My beer. Preferably without the The nitro? Cap, yes please. No, it's not as we saw. Careful. I'm getting paranoid ever since the cooler incident. Jeez. So, so this is what I'm drinking. Left hand, milk stout. I've gotten really fucking into milk stouts in general, but the micro milk stouts. I never really considered myself to be like a beer person ever. Um, I went to college. I, you know, played beer pong with shitty beer, gone to parties and I don't like IPAs or anything that's like super hoppy and bitter tasting, but I found, where was it? There was a brewery that I went to, oh, up in my old hood in Luckett's called Vanish. Um, we went to, for a friend's 
birthday party, I think, and they had a nitro, like, chocolate milk stout or some shit, and it was the best goddamn beer I have ever had in my life. Um, and so now, uh, apparently, I'm a stout girl if I drink beer. Otherwise, it's usually whiskey, old-fashioned, or, like, whiskey and ginger ale, something like that. But tonight, we are stouting. Heavy beer for uh, heavy meat. Yeah. You guys should follow me if you haven't already. Um, the first couple of streams will probably not make it followers only because it's just the first couple of times and I want to give um, the folks over on Facebook and anybody that's watching my YouTube channel uh, time to kind of filter over, but eventually we'll probably uh, have to follow me for a little while before you can chat in. So follow me. It's twitch.tv slash polechef and there are links. Chef. <laughs> the polechef. The polechef. The polechef. The, the is very important. Um, but yeah, so do that, and then you can also find my Facebook group, The Pole Chef, on Facebook. Um, I think we have something like almost three or 350 followers on the, on the Facebook group. I checked the other day, and it was actually way more than I thought. Um, but I have links to my YouTube channel in there as well, so feel free to follow. Like and subscribe and tell me how cool this is so that I can do more of it, please. <laughs> Because I like cooking for you guys, and I'm going to be cooking anyway, so I may as well do it with people that I like talking to. So. Uh, Richard Andrews says, doesn't do it often, but cooking pork ribs, slow cooked in the oven or smoked, is their favorite. Ooh, that sounds really, really good. Crashman55 says, chicken cubes wrapped in bacon, baked covered in a chili powder slash brown sugar. Ooh, so it gets like caramelized. And, ooh, yes, fuck yeah. I want that, but like as a kebab. Just stick the skewer, the cubes on there with maybe some like, that wants like onions or something. Like caramelized onions or, damn. Some peppers, maybe? Yeah. Shit. We can do that. <laughs> we can do it. We're going to add that to the list. <laughs> If you want, um, chat in like any major uh, ingredients above what you sent over. Go on the, the Facebook page, Pole Chef, and post up. Or if you're already friends with me on Facebook, go ahead and send me a message with that. And I will definitely give that a try because that sounds fucking tasty. Just checking up. Still got a little ways to go. But we are rocking, rocking and rolling. So, in anticipation for cooking this, can you hand me the small pot? Yes. I'm just gonna get things organized for the green beans. Thank you. Small pot. In the bowl. So what we're gonna do basically is we're going to finish cooking the duck. We're gonna render down the fat and then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna like crank it just like a teeny tiny bit. And then as I consult my recipe, because I haven't made it since Saturday. Uh, a couple of minutes. Yeah, so we're gonna finish rendering this down, turn up the heat to crisp up the skin a little bit before we flip it flip it over, cook it for a couple of minutes. While we do that, we're gonna put in the honey and the soy sauce here. And that's it. Um, and then we're basically gonna like simmer it and reduce it down so it's kind of a glazy consistency. And we're gonna take a spoon and baste the duck with the skin top side up. So it kind of absorbs all the juices and stuff. Um, and then what we're gonna do is take the duck out of the pan, but we're going to leave the sauce in the pan. And then normally at that point, I would reduce it down a little bit more. And then once it's kind of like a thick, syrupy, glazy kind of consistency, then I would add the butter at one point. But I think we're going to go ahead and try adding a little bit of duck fat to that just to kind of bulk it up and give it a little bit of richness and body. And you turn off the heat and just swirl it around the pan to give it some oomph, and then we're gonna pour it in a separate bowl and set that aside for a bit. While the duck rests, we are going to 
cook the green beans for like tops like three minutes, um, boiling water, salted boiling water, and then pull them out, stick them in ice water so that they stop cooking, which is what blanching is. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that or not. It took me up until maybe three or four years ago to realize what the fuck blanching meant. Um, but basically you cook it and then blanching it is you basically like cool it down really, really fast so that it stops continuing to cook. It's something that I learned when I was making hard boiled eggs because I really like hard boiled eggs, but I also like soft boiled eggs way more. And if you let the egg continue to cook or stay hot, then it'll overcook and you'll miss your mark. So I learned how to do that, um, how to do blanching by trying to make soft boiled eggs. What's a, uh, what's a new technique you guys have learned recently or something that you are trying to teach yourself how to do? I know I'm always trying to learn new skills and techniques myself. Nothing. Let me give you guys some more money shots. Richard says, recently learned how to make cheesecake. Ooh, that yeah. really is a pain in the ass. It is a huge pain in the ass. There are no bake cheesecake recipes that I usually prefer because I agree with you. Regular cheesecake is a pain in the ass to make because you have to put it in the oven and then cook it and then let it cool down and then do stuff with it. It's very time intensive. So I'm going to lift this guy up so you guys can kind of see what's happening on the bottom. So you can see it's got a little bit more golden brown around like the edges and stuff, but there's still lots of fat that's still, if I rotate it this way, you guys can probably see the sides a little better. So you see there's still this like thick, white strip at the bottom. That's what we're rendering down. And you can hear a little bit of popping, but you don't want it to give it like a hard sear or anything like that. So since we're waiting forever in a day, for this duck fat to render down. If you guys have questions about techniques or anything kitchen or cooking related, recipe related, anything at all that you guys wanna know, now's the time. Because once this is done, we're gonna be kind of right back into it. So this is a good point to hit me with your best shot. Oh. Or maybe ask the duck some questions. So we're going to take this moment to go take a break real quick. So if you guys want to hang out and watch this deliciousness pop, don't worry, I'm not going to let it like overcook or anything. I'm just going to go step out for a second and I will be right back and you guys can
check on the skin. It should be pretty close to done. Should not have that much time left. I think we can afford to let it go a little bit longer, but that is now. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys on a, oh, a tour of my kitchen. So we just got a new house. And for anybody who's seen the Pole Chef kitchen circa two years ago when I stopped doing this stuff, this is now our kitchen, which is so large. We probably could put a kitchen table in here or something, but you know, I kind of like just walking around my kitchen just because I can walk around my kitchen. Thank you, Richard. I too like my ceiling pan rack. It also means that I can watch the TV over here while I prep down here. This is like some super meta stuff right here. But I can sit here and prep while I watch TV and the pans don't get in the way. This is our fancy glass cabinet full of all of our accoutrement. We're going to get a nice, good zoom in money shot of them breasts. So you can see how it's like popping at the bottom. but it's not giving you that really heavy sear sound. It's just like a gentle bubble. All right, pretty sure it's basically almost done now. So we're gonna set you guys back up. Check on my angles. That's a little much. on this, see how far we've got. Not bad, almost done. Real, real close now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drain this off and then I'm gonna crank the heat a little bit and we're gonna crisp up the skin. I'm gonna give you guys a nice look of this crispy deck skin. So we've got Really, like, look at the juices. Juices. So you can see how the skin has, like, significantly shrunken up around the duct. When I first put this in here, the skin was, like, overlapping on either side. I'm going to check this one, too. Yeah, you can see, like, the brown of the five spice spice has really added a lot of brown to this. But, like, there's, like, little bubbles and stuff in the skin. So you can see it's, like, super crispy. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to like a little bit over medium, not quite all the way to medium high. I don't wanna like burn it, but I am gonna crank it up a little bit. And then right before we flip it over, I'm gonna drain the fat one last time. Going. I'm going to go grab some aluminum foil that I can use to cover the duct while it rests, so bear with me. Alright, um, now 
now that it's heated up a little bit, I'm going to crank it up a little closer to medium high. Now you can see it's starting to smoke a little bit over here, just a little, not too much. We're going to drain. Check it out. All right, cool. So I'm going to bring it down to, mine goes from like low to high and my medium high is at like a seven. So I'm bringing it down to like a six, five and a half or so, just a little bit over medium. I'm going to go ahead and flip this bitch. And there's like a little bit of the duck fat still in the pan, but most of the big stuff has been strained out. So you'll see there's like bits and pieces of like the spices and the salt and pepper and stuff that was on top of it um, that I drained out. And then this is the fat. Give you guys a good fucking look at that. Okay. So this stuff is fucking culinary gold. So I'm gonna sit this over here to chill out for a bit. So while this is going, we're gonna add in the soy sauce and the honey. I'm gonna do the soy sauce first because it's got a little bit of an acidic thing going on with it. It's gonna help deglaze any of the fond on the bottom of the pan and bring that up. So the what? The fond, F-O-N-D. So all of these little like crispy bits of skin and like the brown stuff that sticks to the bottom of the pan when you cook meat, that's called fond. And that is excellent sauce base for literally any reason. So we're gonna put this in here. We're gonna let that bubble. And turn down my heat straight to medium because I don't want it to all burn off immediately. And now we're also going to add the honey. I'm going to grab a spoon. And we're going to kind of mix this together a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt these towards the back. I'm going to let it bubble up a little bit first, get some heat going in the sauce, and then I'm going to tilt the pan back, and then I'm going to spoon the sauce over it, and that's going to baste it in this stuff. So I want to try and keep it close to the heat because we are still trying to cook the duck, but I don't want the sauce to, because one of the things that you'll notice if you cook steak and you baste it with butter, when the butter gets really hot, like boiling hot, when you spoon it onto the steak, you can actually sometimes hear the butter sizzle on the steak, like it's hot enough that it like crisps up on the meat itself. So I'm going to go between letting it bubble up a little bit in the pan and then basting it over because what I want is I want this sauce to turn from this like watery consistency to a more like syrupy thick glaze. And it's not going to get all the way there because remember again, I'm going to take the duck out when it's done cooking and I'm going to reduce it down and add a little bit of its own duck fat to it to kind of thicken it up a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of let it bubble and then baste it. And this is only, we're only going to do this for a couple of minutes. Now, duck is one of those meats that um, is technically, um, as far as I have learned thus far, culinary, culinarily referred to as a red meat, kind of like beef or pork. Um, so it is something that can be eaten in like rare, medium, rare range, kind of like a steak. So it's definitely something that you don't want to overcook, but it's definitely something that's, you know, still really delicious if it's not like brown all the way fucking through. You actually kind of want it to be like a little pink in the middle. A 
I'm just kind of using my spoon to test the firmness of the duck. And what will happen is this one's actually almost done. This one still has a little bit of time left. But what will happen when this is resting is right now it feels actually rather firm um, for as long as it's been cooking. But when it rests, the muscles aren't actively being agitated by temperature change. So when it's resting, it literally relaxes the muscles and allows the juices to relax inside the meat, which makes the meat more tender and more, you know, juicy. So if you're making like a steak or a meat or a chicken of some kind, you always want to let your meat rest before you slice it open. If you slice it open before it's had a chance to rest properly, all of the juices are going to just fucking come out and you're going to lose a lot of the tenderness and a lot of the flavor that's supposed to go with it. And we don't want that. We're all about the flavor. So you can see if you look at it from the side here, so this little chunk of duck fat here is like, you can't really hear it exactly, but like I'm scraping my spoon across this thing and I can hear like a little crispy across the skin. That's how I know that it was rendered down well. Because it started off like at least twice that thickness when we first started rendering it. And you can see the nice cross hatch pattern and stuff that came through. And you can render down the duck fat pretty much as far as you'd like. But I personally like fat on meat, especially if it's you know, crispy on one side, because it gives it good flavor. So this is definitely firmed up a little bit more. I'm gonna let this sit for like another minute maybe, and then I'm gonna take it off, okay. and we're gonna cover it in foil and let it rest, and then we'll be um, taking care of the sauce, and then we'll be on the beans. Why are we cooking duck again? Why are we, who's asking? I am. You're asking, why are we cooking duck again? Because you 31 bougie fucks wanted me to make duck. So here you go. We're making fucking duck. And it was delicious when I made it on Saturday and it's probably gonna be delicious today. And I'm not gonna be super mad because I really like duck, but it's fucking expensive and it takes forever. So maybe don't do that again. <laughs> All right, so we've got a lot of foam and bubbles and stuff, so this is gonna be my cue to take the duck out. And we're gonna rest it skin side up. You can rest it skin side up, skin side down, does not fucking matter. So the duck breasts have significantly shrunken down. We're gonna reduce the heat to like a simmer because I don't want it to burn off while I'm tenting this. So we are going to tent the meat, by which I mean cover with aluminum foil on a separate plate. Like Kyle said earlier, we're all about food safety in this kitchen. I'm gonna tent this all the way so it'll keep the heat intact so it'll keep the meat from cooling down too fast. And I'm just gonna set this aside. Thank you. So now, it's sauce time. So, if I get, where's my spoon? So at this point, the sauce itself is still kind of like watery. So I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. Like just below medium, it's a little bit medium low or so. Crashman 55 says we need to go to bed. Bye. Thank you for coming. Please follow me if you haven't already. Comment on my Facebook uh, group if you liked the stream and what you liked about it. And like and subscribe. You guys are fucking awesome. Alright, so this has gotten significantly foamy and I am happy with that. I am going to actually turn off the heat for the moment and set this aside in the pan. Because what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the duck breast to rest. And then after they're rested, I'm going to dump all of the resting juices into that sauce and it's going to make it amazing. So I'm going to take this off the heat for the moment and set this aside to cool down so that it doesn't burn. Now we're going to fill a pot up with water and make some fucking beans. I 
hopefully by the time the beans are done, the duck will be rested and be off to the races. Crash955 says you should know who they are by the comments, but they also commented that they were Alex earlier. Oh, hi Alex. I'll make your chili soup or your potato soup soon. Law of Tsunami says yeet. <laughs> yeet, yeet to you as well, Jimmy. All right, so I'm putting a fuck ton of salt in here because I like my veggies super salty. Uh, but feel free to salt as you will. And we're just going to bring this up to a boil. Stick in our beans. And for anybody who's curious, I mean, I know you, you saw me putting it on the duck earlier, but this is the Chinese five spice. It looks like kind of sand, but it's like powder. I don't know exactly what, you know, five spices go into it, but this is what's on the duck. Richard says, uh, if you think you've added enough salt, then you haven't. <laughs> you know, I feel the same way about garlic, actually. And because this is starting to smoke up because there's some like residue and stuff on the pan, I'm going to turn the fan on. She's going to cut all of our audio. Oh no, I'm going to fuck out the audio. Turn her. Galloper in a wind tunnel. <laughs> Quality television, watching water boil. Right? Super great. So, at this point, the recipe calls for you, while you're doing the beans and the water and stuff, calls for you to make the dressing for the green bean and hazelnut salad. Um, I actually don't know what the literal definition of a salad is, but I don't really know that green beans, hazelnuts, and a variety of oils really feels like a salad to me but you know this is actually one of Gordon Ramsay's recipes slightly tweaked by me um, I do find a lot of his recipes accessible and delicious but also fancy enough that I feel accomplished when I've made it um, so for this it is quite literally hazelnut oil olive oil sherry vinegar and salt and pepper and um, like I said at the beginning I made this on Saturday when I test ran, ran this, so it's got this like vinaigrette, you know, consistency. I added a little bit of lemon juice just to kind of break it up a little. And then I put it in this container and shake it the fuck up. You can whisk it if you want in a bigger bowl. I actually really like doing this. I had a whole fuck ton of dressing left over, so I decided to use that instead. So. And then if anybody missed the nuts, Yes. I said the wiki definition of a salad. Okay. A salad is a dish consisting of a mixture of small pieces of food, usually vegetables or fruit. So it's just a bunch of small pieces of food mixed together. Yes. Okay. Served either at room temperature or chill, with notable exceptions. Notable such exceptions. Such as the South German potato salad. Which is salad. served warm. Food is confusing. Salsa is in fact a salad. Salsa is absolutely a fucking salad. Wait, are we gonna end up in this meme hole where like is that a sand is it technically a sandwich? A burrito is, <laughs> is a sandwich. A burrito is technically a sandwich. There is uh for anybody who wants to go look this shit up, um, there is a graph chart of a variety of foods in the um, D and D uh, morality alignment chart. That is like, is it a sandwich? What constitutes a sandwich? It's like the contents and then how it's contained, um, and it's like a, it's a whole fucking thing. I feel like we're gonna end up with, is it a salad? Um, but for those of you guys who miss the nuts at the beginning, um, I got. Uh, pre-chopped hazelnuts which goes against everything I believe in but um, and I stuck them actually in our toaster oven uh, because I wasn't making enough of them to feel like it warranted firing up the actual oven um, and I toasted them at, I think it was like 
think I made a note about it somewhere, maybe. It's like 350 or something like that for like 15, 20 minutes. You don't want to burn them, you just want to like brown them up a little bit so they're roasted. You can toss them in oil first if you Roast don't like it. Roast these nuts! Roast these nuts! Wait, no, this is just in case Heather watches eventually. Mm. Okay, so I uh, tossed them in a little bit of hazelnut oil, super meta. Um, and toasted them in their own oil, and then I tossed them in like salt and pepper after they came out, after they were roasted. Again, just like the dressing, and had a bunch of leftovers, so I just decided to use that. Normally, I don't make things ahead of time, but I decided to do this recipe once before I did it on camera in front of an audience, so I ended up with a little bit extra ingredients this time. But normally, going forward from here, until we start to do uh, guests and special episodes. We'll be making stuff from our dinnerly box, which has a recipe and pre portioned ingredients and stuff like that, so I don't have to worry about extra shit. Except for cheese, because I always add extra cheese. Who are you looking at? You. Brand new mind to the man behind the camera. <laughs> All right, so we're getting like a little bit of a simmer on the water here, so it shouldn't be too much longer. We want it to be, we want it to get to like a full rolling boil. We're gonna stick the beans in, let them cook for like two to three minutes or so, and I should make a bowl of ice water while I do that. Look how little ice we had. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, reuse the same bowl because it's just veggies. There's no meat that went into this, so I don't have any risk of like cross contaminating shit. I'm gonna put these in a pot, cook them while they're cooking in the two to three minutes it takes to do that. I'm gonna dump all the ice in here and put in some cold water. And then I'm gonna put the veggies back in there, drain them, and then set them aside. And then while the, and then toss them with the nuts and the oil. And then while that's sitting and marinating, um, we're gonna finish the sauce, which I'm super excited about. This show is rated R. This show is absolutely rated R. This is mature fucking content, guys. Nut salad. <laughs> nut, nut salad. Hashtag nut salad. Hashtag nut salad. That would be a uh, record. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. You've officially coined our first official Cole Chef hashtag. And it's nut salad. No, the first one was hashtag roast these nuts. Oh, that's better. Both of those. So just in case any of you guys were super longing to see. We've got some boiling water. Turns out if you don't watch it, it boils. Yep, that water is boiling. Yep. Yeah. So this may end up boiling over, and we shall see when that time comes. Turn this down just a little bit. We're just gonna let these go. And in the meantime, I am gonna stick this ice in a bowl and put some water in that bowl. going in. It's going to take a minute, but I'm really not super pressed about it because they're still, you know, they're beans. It's not like they're going to fucking kill you if they're raw. Unlike me, which could. So we're going to let that go for a little bit, bubble for a couple minutes, so you can ice water. All right, so we're 
there too. Sorry about that. We're gonna do selfie cam this time. Oh, that's fine. Can you uh, do an assist? Hey, hey, thank you. Sorry about that, guys. My phone apparently got too hot being next to the stove, so it turned itself off, and also my battery was going to die. So it is now plugged in and safe. So we've got the pan sauce going. I'm just heating it back up a little bit so it's in kind of a runny consistency. It's got this, like, Terminator-like ooze consistency. So instead of cold butter... I was uh, recommended to add some of the duck fat. So we're gonna do just a little bit. Not too much. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna use the back of the spoon to just kind of swirl it in. I'm bringing it up to like a really low temperature. Emulsify the shit out of that sauce. Exactly. Emulsify. Fucking four dollar word over there. Alright, so the reason that I'm doing this now is because the duck should be done resting. And look at all the juice! That meat juices! So, we're gonna hold these down. This is gonna go right the fuck into the sauce. Give it some super duper extra duck flavor. And I'm gonna tent this again just so it doesn't cool down too fast. It's still kind of warm, which is good. And we're gonna cook this until it reduces down a little bit. And then I'm gonna taste test it. And because this is consisting of like the fawn and the juices from the duck, it is highly unlikely that it will need salt or pepper because both of those were in and on the duck while it was cooking in these juices and stuff. But if you taste your sauces and you find they need salt or pepper, now is the time to do that. So we've got this nice, like, thick glaze that we're gonna try and get to. So I'm just going to kind of simmer that a little bit, let it bubble through and reduce down a little bit more so it's more thick and syrupy than it currently is. smells fucking delicious and I don't know it's it's something about the combination of duck and these spices is just really doing it for me there are a lot of recipes that call to make duck with fruits because duck is such a heavy meat flavor um, a lot of the time you'll see acidic fruits like cherries or raspberries or cranberries. Oranges are used a lot with duck to kind of cut down the richness a little bit. Um, I did not do that this time because I want this to be rich as fuck, but the cool, crisp salad that we're about to have with this and the lemon juice and 
things in the dressing are going to help to cut through some of it as well if you have it like all in one bite. Alright, so this is a pretty good like Hershey's syrup consistency as far as I'm concerned. You know what? You are absolutely right. If we were if we were meant to be vegetarians, the meat would not taste so fucking good. So this has got like kind of a Hershey syrup consistency. I'm gonna turn the heat off. And I'm gonna leave it on here just to kind of cool down a little bit. Set that down. We will take you guys back over here. troopers, you know that. So the stove is now done with. So um, I'm going to hand this over to my hers burn so you can stick it back on the tripod. Now, don't touch the orange button. What button? <laughs> How do I? What do I do? <laughs> this is not going to work. Where's the orange button? Okay. I am the worst. Yep. No, you got it. You got it. Just slide it back in there and then you tighten it up on the bottom. Oh. Technology. And then just tilt it. Well, now we can turn the fan off because we're not doing any fucking. Hey, look, we have our audio back. Hooray! So, right now I'm just whisking in the sauce. I'm whisking the butter into the sauce so that it doesn't break up. Because I want this to be a nice, thick, glaze like consistency. And the first time you guys were gone, um, I took the beans off the stove, don't worry, and they've been sitting in cold, cold water. I'm actually going to drain all that out. salt, a little bit of pepper, and basically like a tablespoon, like a solid good pat of butter to the sauce, as well as like a tiny drizzle of duck fat, so this will probably be even richer than it was when I made it on Saturday. I hope. One can only hope. Oh, yeah, okay, so can you scooch the camera closer? Do a scooch! Do a scooch! Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, that's good. 
try to show up as the last thing. Cool. So this sauce now, so on the stove, it was kind of a like thin, runny Hershey syrup kind of consistency. And now it's got this like oopy, goopy, drippy, glaze kind of consistency. That's slightly more melted Hershey's. Exactly. This is more like like I melted Hershey's milk chocolate and then watered it down with Hershey's syrup. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so this is a good fucking sauce for... That's going to be fucking amazing. Uh, but I should probably taste it first, just to be safe. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that tastes like heart disease. That's fantastic. Okay, so now it's not a healthy cooking show. If this is not this is not a cooking show that's designed to be healthy, but it's also not designed to exclude healthy options, which you know, green beans. So you know, balance. So now we have our green beans. We're gonna make the salad. So we're gonna add in some of the dressing. This is maybe where. Are we these on floss. Um, this is maybe three quarters of the dressing. I used about a quarter of the total to dress these green beans because it really does not take that much. It's really just green beans. It's not like a whole salad worth of shit. So I'm just gonna pour in like a dollop or two and toss these in. The dressing already has salt and pepper in it, so I don't really need to add additional until I taste it and decide otherwise. And I'm gonna add a bunch of fucking hazelnuts. And something that I am still trying to get used to myself is being comfortable with having ingredients left over. One of the reasons that I really like the dinnerly options and the food subscription boxes that we use is that they send us exactly enough ingredients uh, that we need that we don't have a whole bunch of extra lying around and you don't have to buy like a pound of sugar just because you need half a cup. Um, so, but if you have a recipe and you have some stuff left over, you need to decide whether or not this is something that you're going to use or if this is something that you need to get at home tossing. If it's a side dish or a garnish or a topping or something like that that you can't really easily reuse, probably just suck it up and toss it. Or eat it as a snack. If I, w I suddenly want fucking hazelnuts, then, you know, I can snack on that if I feel like it. Or I could potentially incorporate that into some kind of dessert thing. But otherwise, I will feed my husband. The elusive husband. Okay, so I'm using the tongs to kind of toss these in the hazelnuts. I'm going to make sure when I plate this that the hazelnuts and the green beans are both visible. So that's basically done. I'm going to have a green bean. Okay, so they're cooked nicely. Got some crunch. I want my beans with some crunch. So I'm still going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. The, this is the first time that I've really cooked with hazelnut oil. And I'm finding that it is very interesting. It's not bad, but it is very strong in a in a, in a quasi unimpressive way. Like when you when you hazelnuts are a very mild nut. Like it's not it doesn't have a very distinctive flavor until you start to do other stuff with it. Like add you know, salt or chocolate or roast them or something like that to enhance the smell and the flavor. Like hazelnut oil is very overpowering in this dressing right now. So I had to add like a little bit more lemon juice or a little bit more vinegar or salt and pepper or something to make it. Let's try another one. Mm -hmm. So that's way better. Okay. Salt and pepper will literally save your fucking life, guys, in the kitchen. So... Salt and pepper help to, salt more so than pepper, or salt and pepper help to enhance the existing flavors of your food. So if you find something that's bland, don't add so much salt that it becomes overly salty. Just add enough that it kind of boosts the flavor. Okay, so 
We've got our duck is pretty much done resting. I'm going to bring that over here. If there are any more resting juices left in this, I'm going to dump them in the sauce, which there do not appear to be. Can you tilt? What am I tilt like? Yeah. I'm gonna set the beans aside. We're gonna get our moment of fucking truth to see if this turned out. Look how fucking glazed these are right now. Okay, there's some juices. We'll put some juices right back into the fucking sauce where it belongs. That wasn't enough liquid to make the sauce overly syrupy, so that's still good. All right, cool. So we're gonna, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut crossways at a slight angle so that I can fan out the pieces on the plate. So I'm gonna start at the end and tilt in at like a 45 degree angle and just push forward and let, <laughs> it sounds cliche, but let the knife do the work. And we'll pull out and so this is what we got. Our cross section is a pretty damn good fucking medium rare. It is light pink. You can press against it and see some of the juices are still in the meat fibers. There's a little bit of a fat cap on the top. I could probably have rendered it down a little bit longer, but honestly, I kind of like a little bit of fat cap on my meat. So that is a personal preference. Um, the other thing that I have learned recently with duck being as tough as it is to cut through the fat sometimes is you can flip it upside down and it's a little easier to cut through the meat first and then end across the duck fat rather than try and start on the top of a crispy duck skin. Kind of similar to cutting through fish skin once it's all crisped up as well. So you can flip it upside down and cut through it a little bit easier so you have some nice clean cuts. So you've got these all the way through and I'm actually gonna cut off this little tiny bit and not my fingers. Set these aside. Flip this back around. So now we have these nice clean breaks. There's no shredded skin or um, stuff on the top. And we're going to do the same thing with the other one. We're going to flip this over. Give it a good slice through. Make sure we get all the way to the bottom of the skin. And if you get a piece of a breast that's got a tenderloin attached to it, you'll see kind of these connective tissue fibers here. This piece just kind of lifts up. You can either pull this off and cook it separately or you can leave it on. It's up to you. And I can definitely feel that this duck has relaxed a lot since I took it off the heat. It's a lot more tender, a lot softer. I'm gonna take this and cut a piece off. These, these we call chef's treats because this is the stuff that we get to eat so that we can keep the presentation fancy. So we flip this bitch back over. Once again, clean lines, and out like that on the plate. So now we get to my favorite time, which is presentation time. So I'm gonna plate up these first and stick these on a separate plate so that I can clean off my board and make room for my dishes or dish for this instance. I'm going to plate one up and then I'll show you guys and then I'll plate up Larry's food because he can eat last. note if you have a really good set of kitchen knives it is always best always best to hand wash them rather than to put them through the dishwasher if you try and put knives 
that have a sharp blade like a chef's knife in the dishwasher, eventually you run the risk of dulling the blade or ruining the blade itself, which we don't want. So, we're gonna pop down here. I'll give this a try. This is a damn good fucking duck. I just need you guys to see this. It's fucking great. Jesus Christ. Okay. So now I'm going to wipe this down, clean it off. I'm going to get one of my fancy plates. I'll plate play it out. Once again, I'm going to spray it down with vinegar and water. And this is one of the reasons why I like having the trash can on the end of this thing. So I can go right off the cutting board and right into the fucking trash can. An entire set of dishes that is dedicated to presentation. They are all white, they are all round, and they are all plain on purpose. I do have a set of stoneware dishes that are in different colors because I think they're cool and they're really sturdy and neat looking. But in terms of taking pictures, white plates provide a really good contrast for most of the foods that I make. So that is what I stick with. So we're going to start with the beans. We're just going to take about half of these, because half of these are going on this plate, half are going on Larry's plate, and we're going to plate them up in a variety of different directions. I don't have fancy tweezers or anything, but I'm just going to grab some hazelnuts, drop them in there, and we want the hazelnuts to accent the green beans, not overtake them. Is we want there to be enough green beans for people to enjoy them. I have a lot of fun with presentations sometimes, and sometimes I really just don't give a flying fuck and just plate it. Sometimes I put stuff in a bowl that should normally be served on a plate because it's going in my mouth anyway and I don't have anybody to impress. But now I have you guys, so I gotta be like paying attention to shit. So we've got our salad, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the duck breast and we're gonna fan it out in like a crescent moon shape, and then we're gonna spoon the sauce on top. Now there are ways that you can spread the sauce so that it sits underneath the meat, but I personally really like the look of sauce drizzled on top. So I'm going to start it in the middle and then really just lift the pieces a little bit away from each other, but part of it should still be touching. And then we'll just take it around this inside curve. So there's the inside curve and then the outside curve of the plate. We're going to take it all the way around the inside curve of the plate. Separate them out a little bit. These are nice, thick fucking pieces too. So, this is what we've got thus far. Not bad. So now we're gonna add our fucking sauce. This is my favorite goddamn part. I'll tell you what. Just mix up the sauce real good. And I usually start with a ladle or a spoonful and then go from there. But when you sauce things, you wanna sauce away from yourself, not towards yourself, because then you'll end up getting sauce all over the plate. So this is going to be that good money shot. Okay, 
just go back and forth and I'm gonna do one more because I really love sauce on meat in general and this sauce is really fucking delicious. So we're gonna very heavily sauce this duck even though we probably don't need to. All right. So I'm gonna bring this up to you guys. So this is what it looks like when it's all done. Pretty good, pretty good, nice and clean. No real spillage or anything. Perfect. So that was our duck. Thanks guys for that, hanging on with me. Um, I'm gonna grab a knife real quick and we're gonna cut into this so we can see how it tasted. And thank you. And what I'm gonna do, can you tilt that back down please? So I'm going to take the end cap, the chef's chef snack, as it were, from the other piece because I still want to be able to take a nice pretty picture of that one when I'm done. Cut through it, nice and tender. I'm going to stick this and the sauce. So before I do that, so you see it's nice and pink, shiny, that means it's juicy on the inside, nice and tender. You can see along the outside, um, when you cook meat, especially red meat, it is very easy for the temperature differences to be very drastic. So when you see a piece of meat that's been um, cooked like a hard sear on the outside and the inside has been very evenly cooked, it is like a hard line of demarcation around the outside where the crust is and the inside is like kind of one consistent color. If it's not very evenly cooked, you'll see like the hard line on the outside and then it gets kind of brown and gray and gray and then pink or red in the, right in the middle. So this tells me that the duck cooked nice and evenly, that it's all basically kind of the same color on the inside and then like that hard crust on the outside. And I'm gonna add some fucking sauce to this because that's how this is supposed to be. Delicious. I'm gonna hop down here to you guys because this is my favorite part. <clears throat> That's my happy place. Oh, it turned out really good, you guys. <laughs> I was really worried that I was gonna fuck it up, but it turned out really good. There, you can have this other piece with sauce. It's all over. Come down here and meet your people. Alright. I'm gonna Gordon Ramsay this. <laughs> he always has to like super inspect his fork from all angles. I got the husband seal of approval. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> now what? Alright, so mm -hmm. we're gonna go eat dinner now that it's almost 10 o'clock at night. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Please don't forget to follow me on Twitch. Follow, like. Up here somewhere. Up, we'll stick it somewhere in this corner probably. There's a follow button um, somewhere on Twitch. <laughs> follow me on Twitch. Follow me on my YouTube channel and come over to my Facebook, The Pole Chef Facebook group. There's lots of recipes we share with everybody. You guys can join in, uh, send in requests. We'll do more stuff in the future. But for now, have fun. Eat we, lots of food. Uh, when are we doing this again? It'll probably be either two weeks or one week. So it'll always be Tuesday, Tuesday 8 p.m. Eastern time. But it may not be every single week to start off. So book your Tuesdays and then we'll let you know. Have a good night, guys. <laughs>